so it's a very very early morning and if i check my watch just see here it is 6 41 and we are traveling to my suru i just wanted to let you have a look at my bag that what all essentials i'm carrying because it's going to be a long long journey three hours going then sightseeing and three hours coming back we will be back by most probably 11 pm so let me show you what's all there in my bag first of all i always carry some of the tissue papers and then because it's going to be a long day i always prefer carrying my eyebrow pencil and a clear lip gloss beautiful gloss which i will like to touch up again and again i will be carrying my power bank because i have to shoot throughout the day and then my most important essential my lens card sunny these are super super comfortable you will be seeing me wearing these shades throughout the day because comfort is something which i really prefer when it's a long long journey so let's go guys so here is the cab which we had booked and i really wish that it is going to be a fruitful journey vegetable which they have given it's not the authentic aloos which they put here you can see there are some cauliflowers and the gravy also looks as if they have put curd in the gravy but it's yum so it was a very very good scene at the breakfast did you enjoy it was fine i'm not a big fan of south indian food a big fan but now because i had been eating south indian for a very very long time so i needed a break and wanted to try the aloo puri of south which was not the genuine aloo puri <laughs> but maybe they cook it this way only here yeah yeah so it's a thumbs up now let's get going back into the car after a very very rich good breakfast on the way to mysore area with a stone marks the area where the body of Tipu Sultan was found after he was killed in the battle with the British. So we haven't reached my Zuru yet? No, no. no. Okay, this, okay. So this is few kilometers before my Zuru. And uh, I think there are so many remains of Tipu Sultan's palaces here because yeah. as told by our guide he was saying that he used to stay mm. at this place more. This is Lal Mahal Palace, a ruined palace of Tipu Sultan, which was destroyed by British after his death in 1799. We could see a few crumbling walls and a grand audience hall of Tipu's palace, as much of the palace area is still buried underground, probably under the houses in the surrounding area. 
It is worth a quick visit due to its historical importance. So here I am standing in front of the Sri Ranganath Swami temple. This temple is dedicated to the Hindu god Ranganath, a manifestation of god Vishnu. It is just 400 meters away from Tipu's palace. There is a beautiful market out here. All the products being sold here are the handicrafts. has an imposing tower over the entrance gate. This tower bears features consistent with Vijayanagar architecture. The entrance to the inner sanctum is through multiple columned halls. sanctum the image of Vishnu reclines on the coils of the snake Adishesh under a canopy formed by snake's seven hoods with his consort Lakshmi at his feet. There are other smaller shrines within the complex dedicated to Narsimha, Gopal Krishna, Srinivasa, Hanuman, Garud and the Alvar Saints. Today is Sunday and wherever we are going, we are finding a lot of tourists there. So in case you can plan it out for the weekdays, it will be better as compared to the weekend. So we are exploring the rich heritage of Sri Rangapatna. At my back is the Tipu Sultan's summer palace. Of course, we had seen this summer palace in Bengaluru also. This is another summer palace of Tipu Sultan. Yuan is trying to balance himself. Yeah. You know, this is another summer palace of Tipu Sultan. Now, Yuvan is very familiar with the name of King Tipu Sultan, right Yuvan? Right. Tipu Sultan's summer palace in Sri Rangapatna, also referred to as Darya Dalat Bagh, was being used as summer retreat by the former Mysuru ruler Tipu Sultan. Tipu Sultan's summer palace was built during 1778 to 1784 AD. Construction of the palace was initiated by Hyder Ali and completed by Tipu Sultan. It has two stories built with wood, mortar, stone and plaster. Interiors are well decorated with floral motifs and paintings showcasing historic events and battles. Tipu Sultan's burial grounds are also nearby. Tipu Sultan's summer palace also houses a museum showcasing artifacts used by Tipu Sultan and his family. Clothes, coins, weapons, silver utensils, crowns used by Tipu Sultan and Hyder Ali are showcased here. 
several paintings portraying key people and historic events including a 200 year old oil painting showcasing storming of Sri Rangapatna can be seen in the museum huge garden area surrounds the palace One of the largest cathedrals in India, St. Philomena's Cathedral in Mysuru is a remarkable example of Gothic architecture. Initially over 250 years ago there was a small church in its place Maharaja Krishna Raja Wadiyar IV laid the foundation of the new church on October 28 1933 that was to be built in the place of the small church built by his grandfather a french man named Daly designed the church Very very big palace with a great historical importance. Mysore Palace, also known as Ambavilas Palace, is a historical palace and a royal residence. It used to be the official residence of the Wadia dynasty and the seat of Kingdom of Mysore. Twelve temples in the whole complex definitely deserve some attention. Lakshmi Ramana Swami Temple is the oldest. and the most important of these temples there is a story of a partially blind man who recovered his eyesight after visiting this temple this temple is also used for coronation ceremonies the best time to visit mysore palace would be during the 10 day dashara festival it is usually in the month of october the entire palace is decorated and the palace is lit every day for 10 days between 7 pm to 10 pm there are two light and sound shows at the mysore Mysore Palace one of the key highlights of visiting Mysore Palace in the evening is its illumination the entire palace is lit with over 97000 light bulbs and is a sight to behold the tour of the Mysore Palace requires you to walk barefoot you will have to deposit your shoes at the counter in front of the palace entrance The Amba Vilas Palace will bowl you over with its mesmerizing fusion of European Rajput, Mughal and Hindu style of architecture. The right phrase for this amalgamation would be Indo-Gothic or Indo-Saracenic architecture. Gombe Tutti, the Dolls Pavilion, is not a recent addition but depicts the tradition followed during the Dasara festival. It's a long corridor with numerous dolls tastefully arranged in settings to depict mythological stories or even scenes from everyday life the first glimpse of the wrestling courtyard of the mysore palace attracted me with its artistic spiral staircase peeping in closer showcases to bronze tigers at the entrance of the courtyard this is where the patrons of wrestling the wadiyar maharajas enjoyed the sport the kalyan mandap is an octagonal mandap with delicate stained glass ceilings green iron pillars and stunning chandelier as you walk around the kalyan mandap you will see panels of several paintings depicting the famous dasara procession these are quite detailed and based on actual scenes portraits gallery near the kalyan mandap is filled with photographs and paintings of the royal family it helps you discover the actual life of the wadiyar dynasty it has baby prince pretty princesses stunning queens and maharajas posing against their palace <laughs> While you are busy enjoying these paintings, keep an eye out for the rare Raja Ravi Verma paintings in this gallery, specifically Krishna Raja Wadiyar as a baby. These 
caskets were used to present invites and announcements to the king and are made of sandalwood. An exquisite rosewood door will draw you into a room that is filled with royal furniture made with silver for the visiting dignitaries. Now, welcome to the most photographed feature of the Mysore Maharaja Palace, the Public Darbar Hall of Mysore Palace will dazzle you with its green and gold arcs. The Maharaja occupied the center of this hall so that his subjects could see him clearly. Around him on either side are green balconies where the ministers and dignitaries sat as per their status. The general public would occupy the central grounds below. Now let's pay attention to the stucco art ceiling in the center. You will see the three murti gods Lord Shiva, Brahma, Vishnu surrounded by 12 zodiac signs. If the public darbar hall had you awestruck, wait till you see the private darbar hall. Also called Amba Vilas Darbar Hall, it is in this ostentatious hall that the king met his council of ministers and had meetings with important dignitaries. Built to impress, every aspect of this hall has a tale to share. The blue and gold pillars are made of wrought iron and are hollow to absorb sound better. The gold used in the pillars is real and the paint in the hall has never been changed or touched upon. So far, this guide to Mysore Palace has covered the public areas of the royal residence. There is a small private section that can be visited. However, this section cannot be photographed. Called the Residential Museum, this space showcases the private rooms and collection of the warrior family. It is not a part of the government area but is owned by the royal family. The museum is well curated to showcase the various weapons, cars, toys, palanquins, headgears, clothes, jewelry and even private room setups. The building is itself a heritage treasure. The Chamundeshwari Temple is a Hindu temple located on the top of Chamundi Hills, about 13 kilometers from the palace city of Mysuru. The temple was named after Chamundeshwari or the fierce form of Shakti. This temple is considered as Shakti Peet and one among the 18 Shakti Peets. It is believed that Goddess Durga slayed the demon king Mahishasur on the top of this hill which was ruled by him. experience today to see how lavish a lifestyle can somebody lead. I am actually so stunned with the history of India. There is so much to explore out here. I really hope so that you must have also enjoyed this whole trip of Mysuru with me. On this beautiful note, see you guys in my next video. And if you have liked the video, don't forget to smash that thumbs up and do subscribe.